Good morning and welcome to Wednesday's Daily Prayers. As we continue to focus on harvest, the story of Ruth and the gleaning laws of the Old Testament. You'll notice I have added a picture of my cat to our prayer time together this morning. If you've been with me the last two days, you'll know that you'll have probably heard the slight jingle jangle of his collar, um, the bell on his collar as I've been recording these prayers. He's very keen to be part of our prayer time together. So from Poirot and myself, we welcome you to daily prayers this morning. We're going to continue with our pattern of prayer, of looking at a Bible passage together and then considering how we might apply that to our lives today and then conclude with something to make us smile. A little joke, hopefully. Of course, this picture of my cat has probably made you smile already. Well, I hope so. So as we begin together, let's pray. As I say, Lord of the harvest, I invite you to join me in saying, hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. God of all provision, we come to you today in prayer. We open our ears and our hearts to hear you speak to us as we listen for your whisper through these daily prayers, through your word and throughout our day. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, thank you for every good gift you give us, your children most of all your presence with us. We long to feel you close to us on the mountain tops and in the valleys of our lives. Wherever we find ourselves today, help us to recognise you with us through it all. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Amen. Today, we will focus on how Ruth's story was impacted by the gleaning laws that we've read about the last two days. In looking at these laws, we saw in both of our readings that they were given to enable both those with and without land to be able to source food to eat. We repeatedly read that God's people are to care for the foreigner, the widow and the fatherless. And Ruth met at least two of these criteria. She was a widow and on going with her mother-in-law from Moab back to Bethlehem, she became a foreigner. Let me give you a quick overview of her story before we look at today's Bible passage. Ruth is the daughter-in-law of an Israelite woman called Naomi. Naomi, her husband and their two sons had a home in Bethlehem but they had left their home at a time of famine and moved to a place called Moab. While living in Moab, the two sons had married local Moabite women. But sadly, Naomi's husband and the two sons all died, leaving all three women widows. As a result, Naomi encourages her two widowed daughter-in-laws to return to their own people as she's not in a position to provide for them. One does return to her own people, but the daughter-in-law Ruth insists on staying with her mother-in-law Naomi. So the two women head back to Naomi's hometown of Bethlehem, and it is here we pick up their story. I'm reading from the book of Ruth, chapter 1 verse 22 and chapter 2 verses 1 to 3. Now Naomi, sorry, so Naomi returned from Moab accompanied by Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I can find favour. Naomi said to her, Go ahead, my daughter. So she went out, entered a field and began to glean behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz, 
who was from the clan of Elimelech. Here we see the gleaning laws being lived out in the real lives of Naomi and Ruth. Ruth finds herself in a foreign land, a foreigner and a widow. Clearly both Naomi and Ruth are aware of their right to glean, to go and pick up and gather the dropped grain they find behind the harvesters. What strikes me as I read this passage is Ruth's willingness to go, to go and to glean, to position herself behind the harvesters, as it said in our passage, in the field of a stranger. And verse two said she was, she positioned herself behind anyone in whose eyes I could find favour. Or as the King James Version puts it, after him in whose sight I shall find grace. This is a very humble position to take, isn't it? And as we reflect at harvest time, the season of thanksgiving and generosity, I wonder how easy we would find it to live so humbly, acknowledging our need for the help and grace of someone else. Because isn't it always far easier, and in truth, our preference to be the giver, the generous one, the one to offer our helping hand to another. It is far harder to admit our own vulnerability and our own need for someone else's help. We read that in the field Ruth gleans in, that that field belongs to a chap called Boaz. It's Boaz's field and through his grace, Ruth can glean. Boaz is in a position to be kind and to be generous and to offer help. This passage, however, reminds us that we can't always be the Boaz in the story. Sometimes we need to have the humility to acknowledge we need help from someone else. Sometimes we are Ruth. But there is grace in accepting the kindness of others. I wonder today if we find ourselves in need of help. Can we, like Ruth, be humble enough to position ourselves behind someone who is willing to show us favour, to show us grace, to show us God's loving kindness. Can we accept the helping hand being held out, the offer of assistance, the kindness of another? Because in the act of accepting kindness, there is grace in that too. As we consider how we might take this time of prayer and reflection into our day. Let's pray together with words taken from the prayer by Julie Palmer that we've used over the last few days. Lord, come sow a seed of hope within our souls that we might yield goodness, patience, kindness and generosity. Lord, come sow a seed of peace in our lives, that we might bear the fruits of forgiveness, compassion and righteousness. Lord, come sow a seed of love in our hearts, that others would reap the blessings of family, friendship and community. Amen. And as we conclude, I offer you another little joke for harvest, which I pray will make you smile or maybe groan. Your choice. Here we go. What day do potatoes hate the most? Friday. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs>